gave themselves to keep our country free. Uh, the reason that we do live in a free country and that is a, a democracy today is because of those that sacrificed and gave of themselves and their lives to go and to, uh, to fight to keep us free. And I believe that it's an important day set aside every year to honor them and uh, to those that gave all. And the reason that we are in a country today that is so blessed by God is because of those that have gone before our faithful men and, and women in uniform and those that have served and are serving in our armed forces and also by the mercy of Almighty God. The reason that we are a free country is because of God's mercy and his grace. And to them that sacrifice their lives, to them this morning we extend a heartfelt thank you as a token of, uh, of appreciation for what they did for us. But also as we are remembering them and remembering their sacrifice and remembering how they have fought to keep us free, we also honor our God this morning and remember all that he has done for us. And he who paid a great price for our soul, Jesus, our Messiah, he gave it all. And our great God uh, remembers us when we're weak and fearful or if we're in pain. And uh, we echo those thanks back to our Lord and remember him who was and who is and who is to come, the Almighty. I'm grateful for God this morning. I'm thankful for the Lord. If you have your Bibles this morning, we want to stand together. We're going to turn to the word of God this morning. And I, I do have a, a thought that I believe that the Lord directed me to, uh, to speak on this morning. And it's... Uh, Perhaps a different message, but I believe it is for somebody here this morning that God wants you to receive this and get something from this that will help you. And uh, we want to turn to the book of Isaiah, and we're going to begin to read at uh, chapter 43, uh, verses 1 through 13, and we're also going to read in the book of Romans, the 8th chapter as well. But in Isaiah 43 and verses 1 through 13, But now thus saith the Lord, that created thee, O Jacob, that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, and I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, for, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not. For I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar, from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even every one that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let it, all the nations be gathered together <clears throat> and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord. <clears throat> and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and saved, and I have showed, when there was no strange God among you, Therefore, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, 
and who shall let it? We want to turn also to the book of Romans, Romans 8 chapter, and uh, verse 28, and then skipping down to pick up the reading at verse 35. In Romans 8 chapter and verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. And down to verse 35 and to the end to verse 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, uh, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. With the help of the Lord for just a few moments this morning, I would like to speak on the subject, when bad things happen to good people, God is still with you. Let's pray together and ask God to bless his word to our heart this morning. Lord Jesus, we come before you, God, once again, Lord, and ask you, God, to quicken your word to our hearts today. Help us to receive something, God, that would encourage and would strengthen someone here this morning. Lord, we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would have your hand upon us. And Lord, give us ears to hear what your spirit would say unto us, God. And Lord, through the pages of this Bible, this book, this holy word, and God, we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you'd have your way. We'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory today in Jesus' precious name. We ask it today in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated this morning. And I hope you don't mind me getting a little comfortable. I'm going to switch. <laughs> When bad things happen to good people. Now, my thought this morning comes from a book that was written by a Jewish rabbi named Harold Kushner. While this book emphasizes the form of a question in the title, there is a lingering something there, a question of why, why this should happen in the title. I would like to give an answer to this form of a question or the, the little hidden question that's in the title uh, from the scriptures. You see, we live in a day in which some people get the feeling that if they're a Christian or if they're a good person uh, or they're trying to live for God, that nothing uh, bad should ever happen to them, whether it's a misconception, whether it's just a feeling and, uh, you know, doubts and fears arise and come in why God would allow some things to happen. And, you know, people can get the feeling that if God uh, really loved me, why would this happen to me? And I would like to submit to you this morning that all people that live on the face of this earth uh, know what it is to have problems, to face fear, to feel anxiety. In fact, we find that Jesus mentioned, mentions words that, that uh, correlate this. In uh, Matthew 5 and verse 45, um, we find the scripture says that ye may be the, f the children of your father which is in heaven, for he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. Uh, he sends the rain on the just and on the unjust. Every person that comes, that is born into this world and comes into this life, uh, walks upon the face of this planet, uh, has problems that will come, seasons of problems uh, that may come in certain times of their life uh, and may face problems that they need to get 
through and they need help uh, and they need strength, uh, but yet they do not know where to turn for strength through the midst of these problems. Uh, and this is what we're going to talk about just a little bit this morning. Everybody on this planet has issues. Uh, if it's appropriate, just could you turn to your neighbor and uh, say this morning, you know what? You've got issues. Now point back to yourself and say, and I, so do I. <laughs> you thought you were going to get off, didn't you? <laughs> Everybody's got problems. Everybody's got issues. <laughs> but you know, there's a difference between someone who does not know God or does not have an experience with God, does not have a relationship with Him that goes through problems and things, and a child of God that is in the midst of the problem. And I would like to submit unto you this morning that the difference is God and a relationship with Him. Consider the Psalms, the 23rd chapter and verse 4, uh, where the Scripture says a very famous psalm called the Shepherd Psalm. And, and it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. But here's the part of this verse I want you to focus on, is the, the latter part that says, For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort, they comfort me. And I begin to study a little bit exactly what the rod and the staff are because these are the things that are to comfort us. Uh, and I come to find out that the rod is actually used by the shepherds to, even to this day and those that are sh shepherds of sheep even in the, the plains of Africa. And they call it the knob carry. The rod is a knob carry. It's a, a, a staff about yay long, about five to feet long. It has a big knob on the end of it. And actually, it's used for protection. This is what the shepherd used to beat back the wolves and the lions and the bears. And they would actually use it as, as a form of protection. And there was a story that I read actually about a man that was photographing elephants in the plains of Africa. And, and these here shepherds, the Massey, I believe they were called were there that were shepherds in Africa. And they were pushing a rock to try to roll a rock down to get the elephants to move so they could get a better picture. And uh, when they started to move this rock and they tilted it up to roll it down the hill, actually there was a cobra come up out from under the rock, was coiled up under the rock and come out to bite or to try to attack uh, them as they're pushing the rock over. And this young shepherd boy, the Massey that that was there, he grabbed his knob carry. And he took this knob carry and he killed the snake as quick as he could. He was so uh, good with that, uh, that rod. And this was the staff that I believe that is referred to in this scripture. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Because see, God will protect his people. God will comfort his people. He will strengthen his people. And I believe that we can take comfort in that uh, is the fact that our God is a God that protects, that surrounds uh, and uh, protects us from, from harm. Uh, he will allow us to go through things, but He will not allow us to go through these things alone because He will be with us. And of course, the staff that is mentioned there is a hook uh, stick that has a hook on the end, and they would shape them specifically for this. Uh, and apparently the, uh, the sheep, when they have the newborn uh, lambs, that if there's the smell of human or some foreign smell on them, the mothers will reject them. And so to get around this, the shepherds actually use uh, the staff, and they will take the staff and they will gently pick up the little lambs and they'll move them where they need to to put them with their mother. Or they'll also use the same staff to rescue a sheep that's fallen off the side of a cliff or or trapped in a cave, has fallen down somewhere, perhaps injured and hurt. Uh, and they'll take this staff and they'll reach down and they'll pull them up to a place of safety. So in that scripture, when it says, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, we can find that these are things that God uses to comfort his people. He, he does rescue us. He does strengthen us. He does help us. Uh, and every day his mercies are renewed every morning. Praise God. 
Does anybody have a witness here this morning that God has done you nothing but good, that God has been with you even though you've gone through battles and you've gone through struggles uh, and you've gone through trials and temptations, uh, yet through it all, Jesus has been by your side. Praise God. Thou art with me. You're with me, God. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You can have peace in the midst of your storm if you keep your eyes on Jesus and your hand in the nail-scarred hand. In the next few verses that I'd like to read are those that I've mentioned for my text this morning in Isaiah 43 and verses 1 to 3, where it says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee. Excuse me. O Jacob that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, and I have called thee by thy name, and thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. There's that promise of God that is contained in that verse. And through the rivers, they, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, and the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. He is the Savior, the Deliverer. And if we go down a few verses, we'll find the verse 5. It says that God repeats it again. He says, fear not, for I am with thee. Praise God. What a beautiful promise that we have in the Word of God this morning, that God would be with what is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. But yet God has done this for every single person on this earth, and especially those that are his children. God puts his favor and walks with them every day. See, some people, they get the concept or they get thinking that when they get saved that They'll just float off to heaven on a feather pillow and nothing bad will ever happen. Nothing will come their way to upset the apple cart and nothing will cause them any problems. You know, it's almost like this. You, perhaps you heard of the prosperity doctrine, you know. It, it's only going to be blessings and there's only going to be good stuff and it's only going to be lots of money and Cadillacs and all these things and houses and homes and mansions. And, you know, when you give your life to God and when you get saved, <laughs> but, you know... <laughs> Nice thought, <laughs> but unfortunately, nothing could be further from the truth, and the Scripture never teaches that. Yes, He will provide our needs. Yes, He will give us blessings. And yes, there are times of blessings of God that will come, uh, and the good times, the times of refreshing that will come from the presence of the Lord. Uh, but there is also seasons of trial and sometimes suffering. Sometimes suffering. But sometimes God allows things to come our way to make us strong. God delivers us from some things. And God delivers us sometimes through some things. But through it all, God is with us. Whether he delivers us by taking the situation away and delivers us from it, or whether he takes us through and delivers us by taking through it. God is still with us all the time. In Romans 8 and verse 28, the scripture says, and we know that all things, I would like to understate that this morning. It says all things uh, work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called uh, according uh, to his purpose. Uh, even though it may seem like a situation that you can't understand how anything good could come from this uh, God can turn the situations around uh, and make a blessing come as he walks with you through your valley of uh, despair and sorrow today. All things work together for good to them that love God. To them that love God. And you know, that's not always an easy thing. Because if you're going through a hard battle and you're going through a situation to be able to lift up your hands and still praise the Lord. Praise God. He can work through those who praise him. And it's not always easy to do that. There's one of my favorite songs that actually I, I, I played and sung last night. And, and uh, I like to pick up my guitar and bang around with it a little bit every now and then. And, and uh, 
just for the fun of it, just to worship and just to, to play songs. But I picked up and through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. And this actually is a story. If you read the, the lyrics of that song that Andre Crouch wrote, it's a story of his life. And it's like a testimony of his where he went through different situations, been to many places, been through struggles and trials. Yet through it all, he learned to trust God. Uh, through it all, he learned to put his faith and confidence in God uh, that not only would God be with him in the struggles and trials, uh, but also God would give him strength in the middle of his battles uh, and he would help him walk through the valleys of life. And also another song, that, a song that we sing, Tears Are a Language That God Understands. But in that song, there's one part of the, one of the lyrics that says, often you've wondered why. This expresses the struggles of life, how God has helped through it all. Even though sometimes we've wondered why. The Bible says that now we see through a glass darkly. We don't see the full picture. It's like somebody that's only got a few pieces of a jigsaw puzzle and they don't have the whole thing. Uh, they see that where their few pieces go, but they don't get the big picture. Right now in this life, we may not understand the big picture. We may not understand why we be, may be going through these things, uh, but one day we're going to see face to face. Uh, now we're seeing through a glass darkly, but then we're going to see face to face and we're going to understand why it all had to be that way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because God will reveal the secret things, the hidden things, the things that we didn't understand at that time. In Psalms 35 and verse 5, the scripture says, For his anger endureth for a moment, but in his favor is life. There's something about the divine favor of God. God, I want your approval on my life. God, I want my life to be pleasing to you. God, I want to surrender my spirit, soul, and body as a living sacrifice unto you, God, because I want your favor. There's something in the heart of every child of God uh, that we yearn to, the, to please the one who, who saved us, who transformed us, uh, who made us uh, uh, free from the shackles of sin. Uh, we want his divine favor. Praise God. In his favor is light and life more abundantly. This was the very purpose that Jesus came. He came to give life uh, and more abundant life. Uh, praise God. Uh, the quickening of the Holy Ghost. There's nothing like being in the presence of Almighty God. In His presence, uh, His fullness of joy. When you step into the presence of God, uh, sometimes all your fears vanish. Uh, sometimes all your failings and your, your thoughts of fear inside melt away as you're in the presence of Jesus Christ, uh, the King of kings uh, and Lord of lords. But this scripture goes on to say that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Your battle is just for a season. Take courage this morning. God will see you through it all. Keep faithful to God and keep close to him because I'd like to submit unto you brothers and sisters this morning that the morning is indeed coming. Uh, even though the battle and things may not look that great, uh, the morning is coming because Jesus is coming back again. Uh, to this earth, uh, one day the morning will come and we'll see Jesus face to face. All the fear will be gone. All the, the troubles and trials and struggles of life will seem as yesterday past, as an ancient and as a past memory. A good brother preached a message one time, and I think it was Brother Stewart, Brother Ricky Stewart, Sr., and... Uh, he, uh, he was pastoring in, in Toronto, actually, at last, but he used to pastor at West. He preached a message one time. He said, don't let trouble trouble you. See, God wants to help you. And in Isaiah 46 and verse 4 said, I, and even to your old age, I am he. Even to the whore hair, hairs, and that's the gray hair, will I carry you. I have made 
and I will bear, even I will carry, and will deliver you. See, God wants to walk with you every day. He wants to walk with you down through the valleys of life. He wants to walk with you through the situations that you don't understand. He wants to walk through you when you're afraid or when you're confused or when you're discouraged. Uh, God wants to walk through with you through all of these things. God said, I'm going to help you if you, will, if you will let me. God will lift you up and help you stand. Note, there's one notable scripture that is mentioned in the, in the New Testament, and that is by the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul went through many, many things in living for God. He was in a shipwreck, and he was, in a, he was stoned to death, he, and he, we could go through all of these things this morning. But Paul went through a lot of things. But it's interesting to notice what he wrote in the Scriptures. Even though he went through all of these things, he was actually stoned to death one time, and he left for dead. And they come, and while the disciples stood around him, he rose back up again. He got up, whether he was dead. The Bible says he was stoned, and he was left for dead. And he got back up again, beaten with rods and... Even uh, I read a scripture one time, my, my wife mentioned it, about he was delivered from the mouth of the lion. Now, some people believe that the mouth of the lion was Nero. Now, does that mean that whether Paul was speaking figuratively, that he was delivered from the mouth of the lion, talking about the adversaries or those who were opposing him, or was he actually in the lion's den? He was delivered from, he, he also said, I fought with the beast at Ephesus. Does that mean he also, like Daniel, was put in the lion's den as well? And God, but yet God delivered him out of that situation? We don't know for sure exactly what he's alluding to there, but we know that the Apostle Paul went through uh, all of these uh, situations. And we find that even in 2 Corinthians 12 and verses 8 to 9, he said, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart, and depart from me. And he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. How could God's strength be made perfect in weakness? Uh, is the fact that God comes to make up our lack and to walk with us, uh, to give us of his strength uh, so that when we are low and that we are weak, uh, we can depend upon his strength. Uh, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Praise God. Two things are emphasized in the scripture that I noticed when I read this. One is the fact that we need to pray until God answers. You know, sometimes we give up praying too quick, or we pray general prayers. Oh, God. Bless the whole world. Save the world, Lord. We pray general prayers. Or we can pray focused prayers. Lord, save so-and-so. God, save this person. Change this life. God, and pray specific prayers. And I believe that God, general prayers, God hears prayers. General prayers, he hears specific prayers. But I believe it takes more faith to pray specific prayers. And many times we pray but I believe that we need to pray until we look and pray specific and look for an answer from God. But see, what was Paul talking about in this? He said, my grace, when God spoke and said, my grace is sufficient for thee, my strength is made perfect in weakness. What he was saying was God was going to see him through. He was going to carry him with mercy and with strength in the midst of his trial. See, Paul was very familiar with these problems of life with these situations that may happen and he also was very familiar with God's ability to carry him through every battle and every situation that he faced um, that's why we find in Romans 8 and verse 35 to 39 when he Paul continues to speak he said who shall separate us uh, from the love of Christ uh, shall tribulation or distress, uh, or persecution, uh, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Uh, and as it is written, for we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, Paul said. He was actually writing that from prison at the time as well. 
But he said, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Praise God. God will give you the overcoming power and strength that you need uh, to get through every situation. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He's acknowledging all of these things are facts that happen at some point, perhaps in, in a person's life. Maybe not all these things happen like happened to him. And, uh, but, you know, situations come. But, see, he had proved his God in this. Even though he'd gone through all of these things, through it all, Jesus Christ carried Paul through all the hardships that he went through. There's a poem that I, that I found that I believe that, was, uh, that ties into this this morning. It's called Footprints in the Sand. By, written by Carolyn Joyce Hardy. And you've probably seen it. They've made plaques about it. You see it on people's walls. You see it in poems and book of poetries. It goes like this. It said, one night I dreamed a dream as I was walking along the beach with my Lord. And across the dark night flashed the scenes of my life. From each scene I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonging to me and the other one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. He said, I noticed that many times along the path of life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, he said, there is only one set of footprints. He said, this really troubled me. So I asked the Lord about it. I said, Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times in my life, there were only one set of footprints. I don't understand. Here's that question. It's like that at the first. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you. And will never leave you. The Bible says he will never, ever leave us alone. In every situation, he is always with us. He said, never, ever during the trials and testings, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was because I was carrying you. There are times that when you feel weak in your body and you don't know how you're going to put one foot in front of another, that when you kneel and say, Jesus, help me, it seems like strength comes from somewhere. And all of a sudden you feel strength to rise up and to go again. You feel strength to continue. You feel strength to keep on moving because God wants to carry us, praise God, with his grace and mercy. We could talk this morning about the heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 and briefly summarize. We just want to briefly summarize it this morning by a couple verses in 32 and verse 33. They were heroes, see, because they walked with God through their problems and trials with faith in God. That God walked with them, yet they stayed true to God. The Bible says in 32, it says, And what shall I say more? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David also, and of Samuel, and of, of the prophets. In verse 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained the promises, stopped the mouths of lions. And uh, continuing on to read down to verse 39. Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, wax valiant in fight, turned to fight, flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, um, that they may obtain a better resurrection. 
Others had trials of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, and being destitute and afflicted and tormented, um, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. All these having obtained a good report through faith. They walked through all of these things, yet through faith and God and obedience, uh, they realized that God was walking with them in the midst of their battles, uh, that God was their strength, that he was the source of their salvation. Um, praise God. Through it all, they learned to trust and say, Jesus, I'm going through a rough time, but Jesus, I know you're with me. And you know, sometimes you can't always feel the presence of God when you're going through a battle. Sometimes God, God allows that. Perhaps the Lord thinks, you know, I won't let them feel me just to see if they're going to keep on walking with me. And he allows us to, that you don't actually feel the presence of God. And there's other times that you're down and you're weak in your body. And you feel strength come from somewhere. I remember hearing a, a story about a, a lady that was praying one time, and she, she was very sick, and she was weak, and, and uh, they were praying in the altar. And uh, she came up to the altar, and actually no one touched her. No one put her, their, their hand on her shoulder. But while she was there praying, and she was so weak that she could barely stand, maybe it was Sister Magruder uh, that, she, that she had cancer. And she was actually got up in the middle of the night sometimes to stand on her Bible, you know, and say, God, I'm standing on your word. But as she stood in that altar, she felt something's hand touch her on the shoulder. And there was no one around her. There was no one close, no one anywhere near. And as that hand touched her on the shoulder, she felt strength forced down through her body. And she felt the presence of God lift her up and strengthen her. Praise God. Hallelujah. God will strengthen us, church. He will, even if you are going through this morning. And, and I'm talking to somebody here this morning because God told me to preach this this morning. It, this is for somebody here. And he would like to encourage you that even if you're walking in the middle of a battle, uh, that if you will put your trust and your confidence in God and will let him fight your battles for you and keep on walking, he's walking with you. Praise God. He's right beside you walking through the situation. If you'll pardon the personal reference this morning, and I think I mentioned this last Sunday night about hitting the porcupine, and I hope you don't mind me mentioning it again. Uh, maybe some were here, some weren't, Dan. But hitting the porcupine, and I know it may seem like a minor thing, but um, when I was passing this other vehicle coming up this nice new highway, and all of a sudden, as I'm passing the vehicle going 110 miles an hour, there's a great, big, humongous porcupine. And I've seen some big porcupines, but that guy was a big one. And uh, he, uh, he came right in the front of my grill as I was traveling along and, and smashed the radiator and the air conditioning thing and broke the front metal part all in, you know, and busted off the, the fan and now the alarm system works when it wants to. <laughs> Somebody says the other the other day sent an email around at work. They said there's a there's a blue Hyundai out there beeping in the in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, it beeps when it wants to. I actually woke up. My wife remembers this. We woke up one morning, six o'clock in the morning. The car was beeping. I'm like, what's going on? This was after hitting the porcupine. <laughs> so. You know, things, things happen, and uh, I tried to be mad about it. You know, I, let's be a macho thing about it, eh? You know, we got men, we're gonna <coughs> you know, we're going to pull our way through. We're going we're gonna to kick over the cans, you know, and we're going to, we're just rough, tough, you know, we're going to get through this, you know, and we're going we're gonna to conquer this thing <laughs> ourselves. It must be a macho thing, right? I tried to get mad about it. I even 
hyperventilate a little bit. <coughs> you know, because I had just spent hours, like 18 hours, I forget how long it was, working on the back end of the car, trying to get this part off. I finally succeeded in getting this part off that can ne never be removed unless you cut it. And I spent hours at this. And then the porcupine trashes the front end of the car. So while I was trying to be mad about it, I said, God, why? Why did this happen to me? You know, I spent a day and night working at the car, trying to get it going. Just pair wheels, keep it running, keep it rolling down the road. <laughs> and then the porcupine had to walk across right in front and smash the front. I said, why? You know, I tried getting mad about it. And the more I talked to God about it, I said, God, why did this happen? the more peace I felt inside. So I tried to get mad again. And I said, God, I don't understand this. Like, like and, you know, and I felt more peace. It felt stronger inside. I said, God, I can't get mad if you're going to give me peace. <laughs> How can I be upset? <laughs> if uh, all the, the more I pray, the more I talk about it, I get, I get peace inside, you know? You see, sometimes God allows us to go through things. We don't understand why. And actually, that was mild compared to what some had that week. Um, Sister Amber, and I hope Ethel wouldn't mind me mentioning it, Sister Amber, it was a miracle. God was with her in that car when she left the road. That could have been a way lot worse than what it was. But it was a miracle. See, God, even though God allows us to go through situations, he doesn't let us Go through them alone. And he doesn't let us, doesn't always deliver us from it, but from it, but God walks with us through it. If we could stand together this morning, there's a song that, and I don't know who authored it. Put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the water. I don't know if I've heard Anne Murray sing it, but I don't know who else sings it. But you know, that's the key, right? The key is, my friend, that trouble's going to come. And you're going to have to walk through mountains and you're going to have to walk through valleys in the days ahead. But I would like to admonish you this morning. Put your hand into the nail-scarred hand of Jesus. He will carry you through all the storms of life. So the answer in a nutshell this morning is when bad things happen to good people, God's still with you. God's still there. He's as close as the mention of his name. We could sing that chorus this morning. He's in the midst of your storm. These altars are open if you'd like to come to pray for a moment.